So welcome back. We're here with Joran Marby, who is the president and CEO of ICANN, the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers. It's not often, Joran, that you get to, to hear the whole uh, acronym uh, uh, out loud, is it? No, that's actually, I had to think about what you said for a second. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Good. Okay. So uh, we, we've spent a lot of time talking together about the internet, how it works, and of course, uh, ICANN is the organization that brings all the keys together so that the users can have an experience that is uh, what they have come to know as the internet. Uh, now with the coronavirus, we're seeing unprecedented usage of the internet. and. Um, People are doing some very bad things with it. There's some abuse you were telling me earlier. Can you tell me a little bit about what's going on at the moment and how I can and you step in to, to fix these things? I, mean, I, I can start by saying that um, what I can, I mean, I can is an institution that is, um, that is governed by what we call the community. And um, the, the, this means that we supposedly three times a year actually come together. Um, thousands of people from more, you know, more than 130, 140 countries uh, comes together to make decisions about policies about the domain name system. And uh, we actually decided to cancel the meeting we were supposed to have a couple of weeks ago in Mexico and turned what used to be a face-to-face -face meeting into, um, into a remote meeting. And I can't remember how many people actually, I think we had more than 14, 1500 people during a period of, I think it's about five days, participating in, in one big remote experiment uh, where we had, at one point in time, 900 people on one conference call uh, uh, during a webinar. Wow. So that to say that this, the, 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 uh, this situation has had a profound effect on how we operate is it's an understatement. Um, luckily, it worked out well. Um, and and uh, we are, as an organization, we're about 400 people uh, sitting all over the world as well. And we've all gone remote, um, as you can make, see on my even more casual clothing <laughs> style that I usually have, sitting in my uh, study back in, in uh, Los Angeles. Um, and I, most, I mean, we, I do a lot of calls. And right now, I'm, I, I sit in my room and I, 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 that's, I speak to a lot of people around the world. But to answer your question, well, ICANN has, a, uh, has one of the roles when it comes actually to have the ability to what people call the internet, which are we are providing what we call the identifiers, um, uh, names, uh, numbers, protocols. Um, we are together with our technical partners uh, in this ecosystem helping uh, internet access to exist. Um, all, of course, provided by the um, telcos and ISPs around the world, which are the end users interface to the internet, and we see that um, we see that traffic are increasing. Uh, there are more requests to resolvers. There are more people online. But from our perspective, uh, from this this core functionality, we haven't seen any. We're not even close to to having any problem at all. Um, so. At least I can say from our perspective that we don't see the enormous problems with the uh, increased usage. So the bottlenecks are other, other, in other places in the system? I mean, I think that uh, what, one of, I mean, especially in the mobile sector, I presume, um, when God created Spectrum, he did a limited amount of Spectrum, and if everybody goes on the same base stations, um, there is not enough capacity. And I think that's where one of the areas that sinks which it also shows the importance, and I'm talking outside ICANN now, the importance of have fixed infrastructure as well. Um, uh, internet, the way we do it, provide, goes on both, uh, which is important, which is actually a feature that, that independent of the uh, connectivity you use, uh, you use the same internet. Uh, and I think at this point in time, it shows how important that is. Um, I mean, there have always been, uh, organizations and people and companies who want to do a mobile internet or a fixed internet or create different kinds of internet. But the fact that you can go online using your Wi-Fi, your fixed network, your mobile network, and always the same internet right now, is also taking away some of the problems with uh, interconnectivity, the fact that you can go online. What we do work with a lot is that 
of course there are bad actors uh, who try to utilize this situation. And we, we call that, with, with lack of better words, we call it domain abuse. Um, people setting up websites, um, selling have fake been, tests. Have, have you been seeing, yeah, seeing something new uh, happen now with this coronavirus pandemic? I mean, so what we've seen, and, and when I say we, I say we in a much broader sense, because here we work in a, in a fairly large system of, of people who provides domain names, uh, sells domain names, manage domain names. Um, and and we, yes, we have seen an increase of, of people who would like to abuse these things. Uh, I think Europol just made a report uh, saying that they also have seen an increase of, of you, know, you know, the typical example is a web page where someone sells a fake test. Yes. or recommend something. And, and I'm, I'm happy to say that as a whole, this part of the internet has rose in a lot to a challenge. Uh, I'm working very hard and working together uh, to make sure that the, uh, these can happen as, 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 as little as possible. Because of course people are, I mean, everybody sits at home, everybody surfs and everybody looks at information, everybody reads news stories and everybody's looking for the sort of silver bullet for a solution and when you find a web page that prevents that maybe you have you I mean, normally you wouldn't pay attention to it but now you do yeah. so we are work that's one of the major issues not only for ICANN but for everybody who's sort of in, related to the domain name industry and and so what, what exactly uh, is your role in this respect so there's these uh, websites set up they sell fake, te fake tests so where, where do you come in as ICANN to stop that from happening? So what ICANN does is that we work, but we know first of all very much about how the DNS system works. And we often become a collaborator and, and a in source of information uh, to the ones who actually do the work. Um, the, the owners of domain names or the resellers of the domain names are the one who actually does the physical work. We often uh, become the link between uh, legal services and other ones uh, and sharing information. So we, 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 we need, technically there's nothing we do when it comes to what is called takedowns and such, but we are often a think tank in now a very active think tank, how to work with this with the, with the rest of the uh, players in the domain and industry. Yeah. If I can just take a second, I, I wanted to um, just uh, plug our website. We're doing a fantastic job with this. Um, where we have a, at New Europe, we have a vaccine and drug development uh, constantly update, updated by our team who is day and night finding the most important news about what's going on with drugs, with vaccine development. That's the one thing I wanted to talk about. The second thing I wanted to talk about is um, you're on, you are one of the alumni of our world. You've uh, been kind enough to participate with uh, your article this year on our 10th anniversary edition, the future in the internet of the internet in the 2020s. So uh, I look forward to some of our viewers uh, logging on and reading that. It's uh, it's very valuable and uh, I'm sure they'll find it interesting. Um, you can also pick thank up- you for calling me, Thank you for calling me old. Old, I didn't call you old. When did I do that? Alumni. Oh, wow. You know, you took part in this and it's a, it's a great publication. I, I hope you've received your hard copy by now. If you haven't, it's, uh, it's in the office somewhere where you cannot go, unfortunately. Um, but getting back to our conversation, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the problems the internet is facing, you know, what the end users are facing at the moment, whether it's our video stream or a little bit later when we go on to stream some sort of movie somewhere, is we see a lot of the platforms are throttling content. Um, so what's going on there? Uh, are we really asking? organization to, to do that on purpose? And what happened to all these years of fighting over this kind of regulation, net neutrality and all the rest of it? I mean, this is not, uh, this is not ICANN turf. Uh, we, we stay away from any discussions about net neutrality or uh, um, the content side of internet. That's the many better organizations around the world um, have opinions about that. We are very strictly, um, into providing a service to the world and, and then it's sort of up to the world to manage it but with that said i could say we, network management is something that everybody does all operators needs to be able to manage their network to uh, to make sure that traffic flows through those uh through, through those networks and especially mobile networks they, they have to do this so i i 
sometimes I think we 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 sort of miss something. We, this is not an ICANN opinion, but I think that sometimes we misuse the word net neutrality for also the needed use of, of network management to make sure that the networks actually works. Uh, it's a technical thing. It, it's not magic in any way. It's hard technical work uh, to make networks flow, and especially when the traffic uh, increases as much as it apparently has done over the last uh, couple of weeks. So looking at the future, uh, is 5G going to come and solve all of that? What can we do to make sure that the infrastructure is there to help us through the crisis like these uh, when they come up? Maybe I am old uh, because I've been through 2G, 3G, 4G, and now it's 5G. From ICANN's perspective, we actually see some risks with 5G as well. I mean, 5G is a fantastic opportunity to, uh, for, for using spectrum more efficiently uh, to be able to provide higher speeds uh, for mobile users. What we do see are some tendencies when it comes to some of the proposals with 5G is to go away from what I believe and we believe is one of the good things is that everybody could access the internet from any type of device anywhere. Um, because some of the suggestions in the 5G space is sort of to build a mobile internet, uh, which is only contained within the mobile network. And there's been proposals to go away from the current IP protocol um, to, to really go down and, and create services uh, or standardization of services that only exist in mobile. And we, of course, I mean, from, from ICANN perspective, we have no business stake in this. We, we, you know, we, we uh, are not doing this for, for uh, uh, we, we are not part of the model for business in this one. But we, we do think that we have a fairly strong voice when it comes to making sure that everybody should be able to access internet on any type of device. And if you don't do that and you sort of splint up the internet uh, because of technical reasons, I think a, a big value of the internet uh, will disappear because now everybody can go online, uh, everybody can reach everybody who's on these networks. And I think that is one of the reasons why internet has been so extremely successful. I mean, in a way, it's a fantastic thing that you are sitting in Brussels. Uh, I'm sitting in Los Angeles, um, and we can able to, with, with the help of this technology, without asking anyone, uh, we are set up this call. Indeed. And, and so I, I am, as always, a little bit, when it comes to new technologies that are going to change the world, uh, maybe because I am old and I've been around for a long time, maybe slightly cynical, but I want to put out a warning when it comes to words like uh, other alternative IP protocols, um, uh, which are not IP in the first place, or uh, uh, the, the way some of the proposals are in the 5G space. I lift my eyebrow, that's very Swedish, to say that just make sure that we don't make mistakes here so not everybody can connect all the, all the, all the time. So to all the regulators and policy makers who are going to watch this, that's a very clear message. Uh, from a man with a I lot think of experience. The end, I actually think the end users, um, because I don't think end users of the world uh, would like to be locked into a technical model. Um, and, and so I think in the end, from a business case perspective, and this is maybe the, the silver lining on this cloud, is that I don't think internet users around the world would like to go to a model where they are prohibited of accessing certain types of information because suddenly they're on this wrong network. Um, I don't think you want that. I don't think the 4 billion internet users of today wants that either. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, let me ask you a question. And initially, when I had thought about this, um, it was meant to be as a, a quirky, funny question to, to end our chat. But the, the, the more time that passes, I see more and more people who are seriously considering this. And, there's a lot of conspiracy theorists out there. They're saying the pandemic is somehow related to 5G testing in Wuhan and in Italy because there's a lot of base stations, more people are getting sick. I mean, what, what do you say to this? Because there's a lot of disinformation and misinformation out there. And there is a tendency of people to jump onto the, the bandwagon when it comes to this sort of thing. I mean, this is also outside sort of ICANN's remit. But I, 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 as you know before, I, I, I was also a telecom regulator uh, for a long period of time, and I think that um, I, I learned about a lot of those uh, fears. And one thing that I, I learned during my years as a regulator is that you should take, you should actually 
you should listen to people uh, who has fears. Um, you might not agree with them and you should spend your time convincing them. But I think right now, in this particular moment of time, uh, I think that we're all going to be valued not on the on harsh decisions we make or everything else. It's about kindness. And I think that right now we have to be kind to people because people are afraid of so many things. I mean, I'm in a lucky situation. I'm sitting in my house. Um, I can pay my rent. I, I know that I can get groceries. Um, my uh, my uh, teenage kids are exercising social distancing with me perfectly. Uh, but you know, there are people in this country here in the US and many other countries around the world who lost their jobs, lost their income, uh, lost, lost their opportunity to, to, to provide for their families. And in this period of time, there's going to be a lot of anxiety over all this. And I think that for the moment, we need to be listening mode. We need to be understanding mode, even if that's not the problem or that conspiracy is right or wrong. But kindness during this period of time is underestimated i think so i'm not going to go out and say that that's that's stupid or that's strange or something i want to listen into the reason why people have those fears um and i'm, I'm i think that we all who are people who sits in this situation to to uh just be nice to people right now uh that's a good avenue going forward Joran, thank you very much. That's uh, those are some very wise words, and I hope that you and your family can stay safe during this uh, quite difficult time, even though you are in a very beautiful part of the world. And I hope we can have more of these chats in the future. Thank you, my friend, and take care of yourself as well. And say hello to your dog for me. Indeed, thank you. Thank you.